Welcome once again to DJ Suketu Unplugged. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode last week on making your own big room synth on ES2 in Logic Pro X. Well, I think it was a little bit unfair of us to just show you something which is a built-in plugin only on Logic Pro X. A lot of you guys might be using other softwares like uh, Fruity Loops, Ableton Live, Reason or anything else. Well, this time, in this episode, we are going to be making a big room synth again, the same melody, but this time we are going to be using third-party VSTIs. That's right. Today, we are going to be using Silent. Well, so let's get into it and check out how to make a big room synth using Silent one. That's right. Silent by Lena Digital. It's one of the most widely used and popularly used VSTIs, not only by DJs, aspiring DJs and aspiring producers, but DJs who are really, really big time internationally and India. I too use Silent and it's a fantastic VSTI. Well, let's get into it. How to make a big room synth with Silent. Again, I'm going to be using Logic Pro X. All I do is open a software instrument, go down to my inspector and go down to audio instruments and select Lena Digital and silent. There we go. That's how silent looks and this is the way it opens. What we are going to be doing now is taking the same notes that we used last time to make the synth and bring them down over here on the new track. Let's see how it sounds without anything at all. Well, that's the default. Anyways, what we do is go down to menu and again go down to the initial preset. It absolutely blanks out the whole silent and makes it empty. And this is what it sounds like, absolutely empty. Not bad on its own, yeah? Well, a lot of work to be done. What we first do is, Silent has two parts, part A and part B. Part A has two oscillators and part B has two oscillators. In fact, part A and part B are absolutely replicated and each function which is there in part A is also there in part B. So let's start with part A. What we are going to be doing first is taking oscillator A1. It's on the sawtooth wave, we leave it the way it is. What we do is increase the voices to 8 and the octave, we take it just one low and we give it a slight bit of a detune again. Well, there you go. I think about 3.86 should be fine. Then once we are done with this oscillator A1, we move on to the right hand side and go to oscillator A2. What we do over here is again, it's a different wave. So we select and we scroll down and choose the sawtooth wave again. Well, once we have that, go to the right hand side where the voices are and make the voices to 8. Once again, give it a detune and we'll give it the same detune that we gave oscillator A1. 3.86 seems to be fine. Now, we get to the next section that is part B. But before we do any sort of tuning over there, let's just see how it sounds. Already giving you that slight bit of a wide feel, right? Only thing what I think is we need to give the increase the release time a little bit over here in the part A, give the release a slight bit of a uh, time. So maybe about uh, 1.25 should be good. Click on part B and we are on the next part. First thing what you do when you come to part B is remove retrig. Take your voices again back up to 8. Make sure that the sawtooth wave is selected again over here. We reduce the volume considerably, maybe a little bit less than 12 o'clock, maybe about 11 o'clock. And we take this particular oscillator that is B1, 1 plus. There we go. We are all set. Once again, take the release, increase it by about 1.3, 1.48 and we should be good. So right now, one more thing. Part B, oscillator B2, don't do anything with it. Just let it be. Click on part A again and let's see how part A, part B and all the three oscillators sound together. giving you a nice feel, isn't it? We already layered three oscillators and three sawtooth waves together. Next, what we do is the filter. Go down, part A filter, select the low pass filter, switch it to 12 dB, reduce the cutoff a little bit and give it some drive. We do the same thing in the part B filter, make it to low pass, 12 dB, reduce the cutoff a little bit and again, give it a slight bit of a drive. Now, this is what the sound sounds like. There you go. Well, it is sounding still a little bit, you know, flat and I think it needs a little bit of effects on it. 
Well, in Logic Pro X, last time when we were working on ES2, if you notice, we went to the effects in the inspector and created the effects using the EQs and everything built in Logic Pro X. What we are going to be doing out here in Silent is we are going to be using the inbuilt effects in Silent ones itself. So when you go to the window over here, click on EQ, click on it again, so the tick mark comes. We reduce the bass like we did last time as well for the ES2 synth. Increase the high frequencies, that's a treble a little bit. Make it a little bit more cleaner just like this. There you go, sounding nice. We give it the reverb like we gave it last time as well. Click on reverb, make sure the tick mark is on in the window. I think that's a little bit too much reverb, so we just make it slightly more on the dry side, maybe even reduce the width a little bit, we don't want it to be too ambient. There you go, with the reverb and the EQ. In this silent, what I thought was when I was making the big room synth, I think a little bit of a delay would also help. So let's just go on to delay, click on that and let's listen to it. Wow, that is a lot of delay. So once again, what we'll do is reduce it, make it slightly more dry, reduce the feedback slightly, reduce the width slightly and let's see how this sounds now with the delay. That's it. Sounding good. Well, once again, you know, like in last time also in ES2, I told you, what if you want to do something like, you know, just filter in the sound together. You've got two filters out here. So what we are going to be doing is, we are going to be going to the modulator, going down here and selecting cutoff A and B, because we are using filter A and B together in part A and part B. What we'll do is give it a slight bit of attack, a little bit of decay, a little bit of sustain and a little bit of release. Now, increase the volume totally and let's listen to the synth right now, fading in. Well, who's going to be the next Martin Garrix TS store and who's making a band like Swedish House Mafia? Well, you know how to make the synth. It's really, really very simple. Do try it at home on any software that you're working on. Stay tuned and next week we'll come back to show you how to make a big room synth on another VSTI which is very popularly used again called Massive. If you have anything in your mind that you want to learn about, do put it down in the comment section below and we'll try and get back to you by doing episodes and teaching you how to go about it. Well, that's DJ Suketu Unplugged for you this week.